The rugged Pacific Northwest delights its inhabitants and visitors alike with seemingly endless beauty. From the grandeur of Mount Rainier to the breathtaking coastal beaches, there is truly something for everyone. But along with this uniquely beautiful landscape comes a pair of rare and ever-present dangers. The earthquake and the tsunami. Recent tsunamis in Japan and Indonesia have reminded the world how deadly these disasters can be. As after an earthquake, an unstoppable wall of ocean water rushes the coast with great force, taking everything from cars and buildings with it as it surges inland. Here in Washington, stories from Native American tribes located along the Pacific Ocean have been passed down for generations. Reminders of events past and that vigilance and preparedness are essential ways of life near the ocean. Western Washington has seen at least 10 damaging earthquakes since 1882, with thousands of minor earthquakes happening every year. When an earthquake caused tsunami is triggered, your options are limited. In a perfect scenario, you would have high ground nearby that would get you above the tsunami. But if that is not available, your next best option is a purpose-built vertical evacuation structure. But surprisingly, as of 2014, a search of Washington's coastline revealed none in existence. But that was about to change. Acosta Elementary School here in Westport, Washington was embarking on an historic undertaking to build the first tsunami vertical evacuation structure in the United States, and not a moment too soon. Recent work in paleoseismology, the study of ancient earthquakes, um, has demonstrated that earthquakes on the Cascadia subduction zone happen on average every 500 to 550 years. The last one was in AD 1700. But we know that the shortest interval has been as short as 300 years or as long as 800 years. So we're in a window at which we could have one of these any moment or it could still be another 500 years away. We have no way of knowing that. And so it's prudent to make preparations as though it's going to happen any day now. Since 2009, the Ocosta schools in the coastal town of Westport, Washington had been trying, without luck, to get a bond pass to make improvements to their buildings. This included tearing down and replacing the obsolete school building. Simultaneously, in 2010, a tsunami evacuation study was being performed by the Project Safe Haven team, the brainchild of Washington Emergency Management Division's John Schelling. Armed with new guidance published jointly by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration on how to construct a tsunami vertical evacuation refuge, the team could now discover how best to implement the concept. The team studied Washington's coastal area, looking specifically at areas like the Long Beach Peninsula, South Beach, Ocean Shores, Tohola, and Nia Bay. After the study was completed, meetings were held with local residents to discover the best evacuation options for the community. We put together a multidisciplinary group of experts from federal, state, and uh, local agencies to really help the community uh, through this planning process. Uh, the process uh, itself entailed uh, really empowering the community and using what we call a top-down process, putting the community members at the top and bringing in this group to help guide them through um, looking at where they would like these types of vertical evacuation facilities, how they would want them to look, and uh, how, how they would like them to be designed, and then ultimately looking at different uses that could be included on a, uh, to provide some functionality on a daily basis, and then ultimately trying to determine how much each location would cost. Generally speaking, what we did was a charrette over, over time. Uh, and a charrette is where you have a problem in the community. So you have a problem and then you bring all the forces in the community to that problem. And you keep layering issues on that problem. And as they come up with things, then you retreat and do some research. And then they layer again. Then you do some research and then they layer again. And you come up with, uh, with a solution or, or several, in this case, alternative solutions. In 2011, after the Safe Haven Tsunami Evacuation Study was performed, Chuck Wallace, the Grays Harbor County Deputy Director of Emergency Management who was involved in the study, came to the Acosta School District and presented the idea of including a vertical evacuation design in their building plans. It was a perfect opportunity. I did 
go to contact Paula Ackerlin, the superintendent of the Acosta School District, and I said, Paula, would you be interested in doing a vertical evacuation, you know, tsunami engineer building when you build this? And she never even flinched. She said, we've been thinking about trying to do this. We really didn't know how, you know, and I said, well, I know some people that can help. And she said, can you bring them to a meeting with, with our building committee and this, the school board and whatever? And, and I said, absolutely. So I left that meeting and I called John Schelling and, and I said, John, I have somebody who's interested in actually building one of these sites. He got everybody together. We got engineers and architects and we got people like Tim Walsh uh, from DNR, you know, geologists. They came in and they spoke to the group. And this group never hesitated. They, they just believed that protecting their children was their number one priority. And I think we left that meeting knowing that they were gonna move forward. The original concept through the safe haven planning process was uh, for a berm uh, near the Ocosta Elementary School. Uh, simultaneously, the school district itself was looking at reconstructing the school building. And so it made sense to incorporate vertical evacuation as a component of the new school itself. That way, uh, they would have a vertical evacuation refuge and an elementary school combined to provide life safety for the students, faculty, and staff that are there on a daily basis. Late in 2012, after many meetings and much discussion, the Facilities Advisory Committee recommended to the Acosta School Board to submit to the voters a $13.8 million bond to renovate the school property. The difference between this bond and two previous bonds that had failed was that this would include adding the new earthquake and tsunami resistant vertical evacuation design to the planned new gymnasium. The committee was um, convinced that we should incorporate that whole concept as part of our recommendation to the school board, that that should be integrated in to the design concept of the elementary school. On April 13th, 2013, the bond passed with a 70% vote in favor. The introduction of the vertical evacuation structure capable of saving 1,000 lives struck a chord in the community, causing them to rally behind the measure and vote it in. Creating this innovative new design fell to Brian Ho and Brian Fitzgerald of TCF Architecture and Cale Ash of Degen Kolb Engineers. You know, this, this is the first uh, tsunami vertical evacuation building in the United States. The uh, building codes uh, have not yet been finalized for designing for uh, an event such as this. So we were working with uh, researchers and uh, groups who are actually developing the building code language uh, throughout the design process so that we could see where the state of the practice was heading and uh, try to incorporate those latest advancements uh, into the project design. One of the ways that we had to think differently about the project is that typically when we're designing, especially to life safety um, issues, we're um, looking at how do you get people out of the building. And in this case, we're looking at how do you get people into the building and on top of the building. And so looking at how both uh, an ingress and an egress um, works in a, in a structure like this, getting people up in um, an event where you've had an earthquake and tsunami and um, all these forces that are um, pretty extreme. So the University of Washington modeled what the tsunami could look like out there and how, how high the, the water would be and so we had to make sure that our vertical evacuation facility, the, the roof deck of the gym in this case, was high enough to be above those projected levels. And we've got to allow for all those people who might be up on the vertical evacuation structure to get out and so to look at um, basically doubling up um, how we deal with a mass of people moving in and out of the building was, um, was definitely unique on this project. The groundbreaking ceremony marked just under a year before this incredible life-saving device would be in place. Upon completion, Ocosta students and faculty would have the peace of mind that if the worst were to happen, they and nearby residents would have a safe haven to retreat to until the danger had passed. The question does have to be asked, what about other areas on the coast? Where will their residents go in the event of a tsunami? The highest hope of the Project Safe Haven team and all others involved in bringing this life-saving idea to fruition is that others will follow suit. So many valuable lessons were learned from this process. And as we have seen, the number one lesson is that it's not only possible, but necessary to create a safe environment for coastal residents provided by vertical evacuation structures. Any community 
regardless of what resources you think you may have or may not have. If you come together and you have people who are willing to solve problems together, to get facts, to um, look at what is your highest priority for the kids and families in your community, that you can do this project. If you're looking at any kind of a, a new construction in a coastal community, that whether it's a parking garage or a, a, you know, a town hall, whatever it is, a new school, you should consider um, providing some type of vertical evacuation as a component of that project. And I think that you can come together and figure out a way to get the funding that's necessary because it, it's surprisingly um, affordable for communities to do. This project is, is something that any community can do. And when you look at it from cost-wise, it's not double the figure, it's not triple the figure. It's only about 20% more on top of what you actually have to obtain to build the building in the first place. You're already building a building, so another 20% actually can ensure the lives of all of those children, the employees and the teachers or whoever else is in um, the building that you're trying to do. There's a quote, it's attributed I think to Margaret Mead, and it says a small, thoughtful, dedicated group of people can change the world, and indeed it's the only thing that ever has. And I think the Ocosta School Project really shows us that. That a small, thoughtful, dedicated group of citizens came together, identified a concept, and then made it a reality. During the process, uh, one of the members of the uh, community came up to me and said, you're giving us something that we've never had before, and that's hope.